All right, in this video, I'm going over repeated games in game theory, and I'm doing this using a prisoner's dilemma, which is a really common scenario to use repeated games. And there's a couple of reasons why this is so common in the real world. One is just that prisoner's dilemmas are actually super common, and the classic example here, of course, is if you have two competing firms in an oligopoly, they have to decide do they cooperate or collude and set the price high, in which case uh, they both make a lot of money, they split the market, or do they defect and set the price low and undercut their competitor, in which case they get this windfall from undercutting their competitor, but the next round their competitor is going to set their price low and they end up in this sort of bad equilibrium. So repeated games are super common. They happen whenever you have this long-standing relationship with the other person or the other firm. And this helps us think through scenarios where if these two people were to play the game once, Maybe the Nash equilibrium would be to defect or to undercut your competitor. Um, that, that's how prisoner's dilemmas work. So this might be the Nash equilibrium if we only play it once. But of course, if you are going to repeat this over and over, that long-standing relationship, the possibility that you could get the cooperative outcome over and over and over, potentially infinitely into the future, that means that you could get a scenario where you can actually sustain cooperation even if you're playing a prisoner's dilemma. So that's the question we're asking here is, in this scenario where H is the windfall if the other person cooperates and you defect, this is basically if the other person has a high price, you set a low price, and you soak up all of the market, um, how much will you get in that case? Well, H is that, that amount, and we don't know what that is. We're actually going to think through um, for what values of H would you sustain cooperation, and for what values of H would you still not be able to sustain cooperation even if you're repeating this game over and over and over. And one way of thinking about that is actually to think, well, if H is like $5 million, maybe getting $5,000 once is going to beat out getting $10 every period for years infinitely into the future. So, so that would be a case where this would not sustain cooperation. But of course, if H is really low, if you would only get $12 from defecting, then you're probably going to want to stick with the cooperative equilibrium where you get 10 every time rather than defecting on your partner and getting 12 just once. So to think about this, we actually need to think through a couple of classic strategies in game theory. And these are going to be grim trigger and tit for tat. So the grim trigger strategy is a strategy where you say, behind closed doors when you're trying to collude with the other person, you say, I will cooperate with you the first round, and I will cooperate with you every round after that, as long as you cooperate. But if you ever defect, then I'm automatically going to always defect after that, and I will never cooperate with you. You've basically got this punishment strategy that you will cooperate until they defect. Once they defect, you will never cooperate. That is Grim Trigger. And that's the one we're going to use for our example here. Now, tit for tat is a lighter version of that. It's less punitive. And it basically says, I will cooperate today, but if you defect, then I'm going to defect for the next round. And, but then again, you can redeem yourself under tit for tat, where if you go back to cooperating, I will go back to cooperating the next round. So the basic strategy for tit for tat is I will start out by cooperating in the first round, but every round after that, I'm going to do whatever my partner did, or whatever my opponent or cooperator, whoever that is, I'll do whatever they did the last round. That's tit for tat. And if you fully specify these strategies ahead of time, you can pit them against one another and look for Nash equilibrium. So you can basically find Nash equilibrium um, by specifying both players' strategies to begin with. And if, if Grim Trigger is a fully specified strategy at the beginning, you can do a Nash Equilibrium analysis where you can say, okay, given that the other player did Grim Trigger, 
Am I happy with my response of doing Grim Trigger? Or do I wish I would have defected and got the five million dollars that first round even though it would have led to defecting forever into the future? So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to say under what circumstances or what values of H, values of the defect uh, windfall, uh, can you actually sustain cooperation? Okay, and since we're doing an infinitely repeated game into the future, we're going to need a rate of return or a rate of discounting the future. Because otherwise, um, any, any um, amount with a positive value is going to have an infinite value. So, so it would not work mathematically if we didn't discount. But there are also intuitive reasons for discounting, which I explain in other videos. Okay, so how have I set this up? I've basically looked from one player's perspective, and I've started here with player one, player one's perspective, Luna. But this one is a symmetric game, so if we were to set up Neville's perspective, uh, we would have the same equations. And we say, what is the utility to Luna, to player one, of defecting? And we see that the, play, the utility from defecting is, okay, if she defects when the other player goes Grim Trigger, and, and by the way, that's the assumption here, is that the other player is going Grim Trigger. If they go Grim Trigger, do you have an incentive to cooperate forever? That's the question we're asking. And we see, okay, if uh, Neville has chosen to cooperate, so we're in this uh, column, and Luna defects the first round, uh, so she chooses H, she gets that huge windfall H, then we know the next round he is never going to cooperate again, so we're going to be in this defect defect box for the rest of eternity. And that's zero. So if we solve for this, of course, that's going to equal H is her payoff from defecting. Now, if she cooperates this round, and basically that means she's cooperating because she wants to get this cooperative equilibrium payout every round from now into the future. And the reason for that is if you're going to defect, you want to defect right now because, of course, waiting another period to defect, you're going to get less since that's uh, discounted at a, a, some sort of rate of return. So we know if she's going to defect, it's happening now. If she's going to cooperate, then she's going to cooperate forever into the future. In which case, she gets 10 today for cooperating and he cooperates. 10 tomorrow, 10 the next day, and he's, you know, doing a grim trigger strategy, so her payoff for sticking with cooperate is given by this equation. Now to solve this, we're going to need a little formula. And that formula is, if you have an infinite series that looks like this, 1 over 1 plus r, 1 over 1 plus r squared, 1 over 1 plus r cubed, etc., etc., that is going to collapse to 1 over r. That's, that's how you simplify that. And of course, if you have something in the numerator like 10, 10, 10, then this is going to uh, collapse to 10 over r. So we notice that actually this sort of matches that formula. So we can solve for this and it's going to give us, and it's going to give us 10 over 10 plus r. So the question is, when is Luna going to defect? She's going to defect when her payoff from defecting, which is H, is greater than her payoff from cooperating, which is 10 plus 10 over R. And if we go back to our original question, when will she actually cooperate? She'll cooperate when this value is greater than this. Oh, and we can plug in the rate of return here, which is basically 0 0.05. Let me do that. So when should Luna cooperate? She should cooperate when the utility from cooperating, which is given by that, is greater than the utility from defecting, which is given by that. And I've just written that out down here, utility of cooperating greater than utility of defecting. And in this case, it's when this value, 10 plus 10 over 0 0.05, is greater than H. Or you could flip that around and say when H, when the value of defecting this period is less than the value of uh, sticking with the cooperative equilibrium. So that's basically how you approach repeated games problems. 
And the key here is that you need to specify a strategy such as the Grim Trigger stra strategy. And then you specify what would I get if I defected, what would I get if I cooperated. You use the little formula to solve that and you compare the utilities. That's the approach.